Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Darpan Kaur and I'm a maxillofacial surgeon and an aesthetic doctor. In this series of videos, I'd like to talk to you about sunscreens, what exactly they are, what they claim to do and how you as a consumer can make more informed decisions when it comes to spending your money on products with glorified claims. Before we move on though, please make sure you subscribe for more content on medicine and healthcare. We've all heard the age-old tale of how ultraviolet or UV radiation is the primary cause of skin cancer, skin aging, skin pigmentation. But let's start by understanding what UV radiation exactly is and how it affects our skin. Ultraviolet radiation is of three types, namely UVA, UVB and UVC. Ultraviolet C radiation gets filtered by the ozone layer. So the only way that you could possibly come in contact with UVC is through artificial sources like lamps or lasers commonly found in the offices of medical professionals. So that leaves us with UVA and UVB. On a typical summer day, UVA comprises of about 96.5% of the UV radiation reaching the Earth, leaving UVB with only 3.5%. However, it is important to note that both of these UV radiations are associated with different types of very dangerous and aggressive skin cancers. It is also important to note that while the visible effects of exposure to UVB are noticed early on like reddening or tanning, the effects of exposure to UVA take time to become visible and often manifest as premature aging of the skin, wrinkles or patches of pigmentation commonly referred to as sunspots. Therefore, proper sun protection will make a huge difference in your future appearance. Another interesting thing to note is that even though maximum UVB rays reach the earth between 10 am and 4 pm, they cannot penetrate glass. UVA rays, on the other hand, are more constant and remain unaffected by the time of the day or the amount of cloud cover and can penetrate through glass. UVA rays also penetrate deeper into the skin compared to UVB rays, which makes sun protection important even if you're indoors. Now coming to sunscreens and what to look for. So there are three tests to determine the efficacy of a sunscreen. The first and the most commonly heard term when it comes to assessing sunscreen efficacy is SPF or the sun protection factor. So what does SPF even mean? The sun protection factor assesses the protection that a sunscreen provides against UVB rays only. That means no matter how high the SPF, it is only offering protection against UVB rays of the sun. SPF is calculated by testing on humans the time of exposure it takes to induce mild skin reddening on an untanned skin in the absence of the product with the time taken to induce the same reaction in the presence of the product. It is important to note that this effect is variable in every individual depending on their natural skin color and genetic constitution. Reddening is harder to notice in darker skin people which often leads to misconceptions regarding the role of sunscreens in darker skin tones. The second lesser known but at the same time very important parameter you should be looking out for in your sunscreens is the UVA protection factor, also known as the protection factor UVA and shortened as PFA or PA. As you may have guessed, any sunscreen that provides protection against UVA will bear the PA marking. The FDA proposed a rating system based on a scale of 1 to 4 stars, with 1 star representing lowest UVA protection and four stars representing the highest UVA protection. Check the packaging of your sunscreens for PA plus markings. Any sunscreen that fails to offer even the lowest level of UVA protection is to bear a no UVA protection label near the SPF. The third test determining sunscreen efficacy is the broad spectrum protection and photostability. This determines the ability of a sunscreen to provide broad spectrum protection against UVA and UVB radiation while also preventing the breakdown of products from UV exposure. Any sunscreen that can absorb UV radiation up to a critical wavelength of 370 nanometers is considered to be broad spectrum. Mind you that on the spectrum of wavelength, UV radiations are only predominant up to 350 nanometers. Products that meet all three criteria of SPF, PA and critical wavelength are considered broad spectrum. Once again, check the label of your sunscreen to see if it is broad spectrum. The science behind sunscreens is complicated and there is a lot of discrepancy in the knowledge of both consumers as well as manufacturers. Now that you know what you need to look for in a sunscreen, check out the second chapter of this series to know about the proper application process so that you're able to get full benefits of photo protection. See you in the next video.